Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you for our, to our witnesses for appearing today. Uh, Mr. Worry, thank you for some sobering testimony. Can you just confirm, you mentioned countries plural. Uh, can you indicate which countries we should be concerned about? I assume the CCP is, is one. Are there other countries? Yeah, and I, it's a great question. And uh, we usually uh, talk in foreign adversaries. Um, really, we're talking about the CCP. Um, you know, in the, in the U.S., it's often enumerated as, you know, China, or Iran, uh, list other various countries like Russia. Um, but if we look at what's impacting energy storage, we're really talking about the CCP. Okay, so, uh, and did I hear you correctly that um, you can trigger a lithium-ion battery fire? Correct. So this is the sobering risk that we're talking about here. Uh, so, for example, Nuvation makes battery management systems. The key job of a battery management system is to manage the battery and prevent a lithium battery fire. Um, the same way that it is designed to prevent a lithium battery fire, that could be manipulated by a bad actor in order to cause a lithium battery fire. So, you, like an example would be what, like it would allow it to overheat or wouldn't, uh, like there would be no, like they would take out some of the safety precautions or override them somehow. Is that what you're getting at or? Correct. So you can actually, if, if it's a battery management system that came from a foreign adversary and they embedded in advance an Easter egg to be able to provide false data injection, they could, for example, provide inaccurate data during charging, which would result in the battery overcharging that would result in a lithium battery thermal runaway. Um, fundamentally, the battery management system is there at the functional safety level called UL1973 in order to keep the battery safe. And so fundamentally, if your safety <laughs> system is compromised, then you don't have system uh, safety at all. Right. And you said you had some examples. Like, do you have examples of this, like, uh, potentially occurring or, or how some of these are, have been manipulated by a foreign adversary? Yeah. There's, uh, sadly, this is not a theoretical situation. Um, this has become an alarming reality. Um, so an example was there was a variety of um, day uh, power conversion systems, which is a, a Chinese uh, power conversion system. Uh, and there was actually a firmware update that was done that resulted in a large number of these systems uh, going offline. That in and of itself was not a state malicious attack, but it demonstrates that inside of energy storage, it's highly common that these systems can be remotely accessed. Many of the systems that Nuvation has in the field can be remotely accessed. For a trusted partner, that is a useful tool because it is helpful to tune the system, configure it, and have it operate well. Um, however, uh, if for a bad actor, that supply chain security is a substantive risk um, that that system can be taken offline and even cause structural damage. So... If I, if I understand your testimony correctly, I, did you follow the, um, the 5G uh, wireless discussion in Canada? But it, it, there seems to be some parallels here. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. So imagine this is, this is Huawei with a large lithium battery attached. And what's the state? Uh, I assume the state of adoption of this technology is increasing as well, correct? gigawatt hours installed throughout Canada. Right. And, and that pace is continuing to, to increase as, as people try to either store, uh, store the energy for lower energy bills. Like, for example, like hospitals put in battery storage systems, as an example. Um, and so some of this technology is being used in, in those applications. We see a lot of energy storage is uh, renewables integration, AI data centers, and critical facilities. If we don't, if Parliament does not take action now, uh, I assume once these storage systems are in place, it's much more difficult to uh, to remove them. Correct. Correct. So the, these control electronics are, you know, single digit percentage of the cost of the system. So if done in advance and prioritizing domestic suppliers, it is relatively easy, in fact, quite easy, to uh, install a system that has all safe domestic controls. If we allow this east-west corridor to go in with foreign adversary electronics, um, it is very difficult to get them out afterwards. Have you had um, discussions with the government, various ministries, about your concerns, or have, like, is this 
like a new advocacy for you, or have you been at this for uh, a few months or a few years? We've been at this for the better part of a year. Um, so we've made excellent progress in Ontario, um, Bill 5 and Bill 40, uh, working with Premier Ford and Minister Lecce. So we have very good relationships uh, with them. And, uh, and, you know, in Ontario, it's very much a bipartisan support. <laughs> Equally, we've been highly active in the U.S. Um, so I've been to Capitol Hill uh, multiple times, um, and it's a bipartisan issue is there. So we continue to get very good support on this. Um, it really, we're here in order to educate that this risk exists and we need to be in action about it. So as a recommendation, I, I noted you did have a number of recommendations, but overall you would implore the committee and parliament to address the concerns that, that you've raised here today? We would implore as such, yes. Okay. We, we need to be aware this risk exists and we need to be in action in order to prioritize domestic suppliers. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, sorry for that interruption, Mr. Wreath. Do these things do happen? You were just talking about was it Littleton, yes, where there yes. was some interference? That sounds to me like a practice run. Correct. Yes, and, and that's what we're seeing. And uh, and Littleton was uh, one of some 200 uh, sites that were found in the U.S. like that. And the, this is uh, the CCP practicing, um, positioning themselves um, in order to, in the future, uh, take advantage of that access in the event of a, a crisis or conflict. Thank you uh, for bringing these concerns. I, I, I will never sleep again, I suspect. <laughs> um, Ms. Young, um, I wanted to ask you about the uh, Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership, uh, the CPTPP, I think, if I get all those letters right. Is that something you're aware of? And what would your members uh, think about that being advanced and perhaps some concluded someday? Our members are happy for uh, any kind of certainty when it comes to uh, government relationships, regulations, and the stability of being able to do business. So if, if you ask your, your average small to mid-sized business, what do you know about that? Maybe not a lot. Maybe they don't, they don't have the capacity to spend time looking into um, to things that are beyond the day-to-day. Exactly, but what they do know is when they all of a sudden have to hire a lawyer or a customs broker or logistics uh, consultant because they no longer understand what's going on in their own business. Those are the real day-to-day -day impacts that they see. And so you know, what they are asking us for is just can we get some answers, can we understand what's happening, and can we please uh, have some stability. They just can't make any business decisions right now. And uh, we're seeing millions of dollars just sitting on the table waiting to be invested. Along that line, uh, how long can your members hold out in this uh, climate of uncertainty? It depends. Uh, we, you know, the top performers are taking advantage of uh, the, the lack of action from others and they're making investments and decisions. But also some are saying, you know what, I... I'm going to sit back and wait. That's the majority. Some are investing elsewhere. Uh, some are um, having to lay off workers because they are uh, unable to feel like there's something positive down the road. So, you know, you have to think that most, most of the small businesses and mid-sized businesses in Canada are employing a lot of our neighbors and uh, they really depend on those jobs. They're the ones that make the economy go around. And so this, this current climate is difficult for them, and they, they just really want some answers. Thank you. Minutes? Sure. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Mr. Worry, would you be able to provide the committee uh, a list of uh, some companies that you follow closely that you think we should be more concerned about? Uh, n not in public here today, but could you follow up in writing with some of the companies that you bump up against that you believe are, are connected to foreign state actors? Yeah, we, we can definitely provide that. Uh, we can provide that information to the committee. Okay. Yes. Uh, excellent. Um, have you provided a list like that to the government, federal government yet, or do, do you believe the government is aware of which companies they should be concerned about? Uh, we've provided some of that information to the province of Ontario um, and the work we've done in the U.S. I, I don't think we've yet done that in a federal level in Canada, and we're happy to provide for that. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Um, just like a broader question, how f close are we to um, like residential applications or more 
broader use of battery systems residentially? Like, is that something we can expect to see over the next few years, or are we uh, a few years out from that? Yeah, if we look at the installations of energy storage that are going in, um, utility level installations are the largest percentage, like there's some 80% uh, based on batteries uh, cap capacity, megawatt hours installed. Um, in terms of quantity unit number, there is a lot of residential installations going in. Um, increasingly, uh, utilities tend to encourage and incentivize uh, residential energy storage installations, especially when it's done alongside solar installations. Um, basically, once you hit a, a certain percentage uh, penetration of renewables in a uh, utility area, then you want to incentivize your customers to use energy storage uh, because on a, a sunny summer afternoon, you don't want more energy on the grid. Uh, electricity is kind of like water. So once it's made, it has to go somewhere. So it either has to go to a load or it has to be stored. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thank you. Mr. Lavoie, 